Yeah, the head coach, Brad Brownell and Hunter Tyson. Congratulations to Bonnie's. Uh, just they played an incredible second half, big time shot maker. Uh, so they're, they're a difficult team to play and, and really hard to play in about 18 hours uh, because of all the different things they do offensively. Um, you know, you can tell they look like a team that's been together for several years and a good team that's been together because they execute their stuff incredibly well, not just like an initial action, but they've got second action and third action that they get to that most people don't. And uh, that was you know, the difference was their ability to, to shoot the ball in the second half. Um, we had some shots in the second half that, you know, we need to make. We didn't make very many. Um, but uh, this is certainly a disappointing loss because I thought we played really hard and really well for – you know, 25 to 30 minutes of the game, but got beat by a team that executed better than we did down the stretch. Hey, Coach Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. Um, obviously, like you said, you led most of the game. I think you're up by as many as 16. What, what what was the key to that that run that they went on in the in the second half? I think it was a 16 nothing run. Shot making. Um, I guess they made 10 threes in the second half, maybe 10 to 12. Uh, you know, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, they they just, they really execute their stuff. They, you know, if they run some intricate things where there's misdirection and a screen going back the other way and we had some confusion, you know, it's hard because you haven't, you haven't practiced, you haven't seen as much of that this time of year. And so there's just really good offensive scheme that their kids run extremely quick, fast pace uh, that makes it even harder to guard. Uh, and when they started making some shots, obviously the crowd was great for them. Uh, the building got energized, and we just weren't able to, to make enough plays to, to uh, withstand. So, Brad, you mentioned the crowd. Obviously, I mean, there's some more, but you guys can't take more victories with it. But is it a good experience for you guys to play just in a hostile environment? Yeah, this was this was a great game for our team. I mean, it, you're playing against a NCAA tournament team you know, in an environment that feels a little bit like a road game and uh, you got to make plays to beat them. you got to execute. Hopefully we learn from it. Hopefully it makes us better. It makes us smarter, tougher. Uh, you know, we just, we didn't make a couple plays that we need to make in order to beat a team of this caliber. And uh, to their credit, those guys, just, they kept playing. We told our kids before the game, this is going to be 40 minutes. It doesn't matter what the lead is. It doesn't matter. You know, whether we're up, down, whatnot, this, these guys will never give in. You've got to beat them. And uh, they proved tonight that that's hard to do. With Alan Jr., you're hoping that maybe some of the shots are actually a little better. Just with the yeah, a little bit. I mean, he's Al's one of those guys that's a little bit of a, you know, I, I give him some leash. I mean, that's, you know, he's, he's a guy that makes a lot of shots for us. He's made some most throughout his career. He's probably a career 40% three point shooter. And so he's going to have a few. Uh, that are going to be a little bit looser than some other guys, uh, but we didn't execute and make them today. Second uh, half. What do you think the guys can learn from a game in an environment like this uh, early in the season? I think really just not to let up. Uh, really got to credit those guys. Like Coach said, they ran a lot of good stuff, and they played hard all four events, and they executed better down the stretch. So not just to get comfortable and continue to work hard and treat every possession like it matters so we can come out on top. Brad, I know with the free throw shooting from, from David Collins, you know, it's been up and down, but it's the type of player you felt like you guys been able to see the intensity he has on, on both sides. Yeah, yeah. I think David and Nas have both been good players for us. They're really competitive. It hurt us that David got into some foul trouble. Um, you know, he's a big, strong, physical guy that brings the toughness. He and Nas both, they bring toughness physicality and you can see we don't have a lot of guys like that especially at the wing and so um, those guys are important players for us and I thought they did a lot of good things in the game today. Coach on the last play did Nick do the right thing to dribble back out? To the no he should have just gone ahead and taken the two we, we obviously ran a play to, with a couple options to get threes uh, his being the first PJ was another one and then we told him if you don't feel comfortable with the three Driving in the paint, and if you think somebody helps, spray it. We'll take the three to tie if they're going to if they leave. They they showed tremendous defensive discipline on that because when they switched, they switched again. Then we drove it. Most teams are going to have somebody look at the ball and leak, and they didn't. They stayed home. Now, you know, Nick should have just laid it in with five seconds to go or six, seven seconds to go. Now we get it in and foul them and make them make free throws. But 
Um, you know, he just he made a poor choice. Um, ultimately, that's on me. Uh, but you know, that's not obviously what we wanted to do. Brad, on the previous position, was there any thought of going to PJ down low? We tried a couple of times uh, late, and they did a good job. We called a play to go inside, and they jumped on top of him uh, and made it hard for us. And so, yeah, I mean, they're, we certainly were trying to get a mix throughout the throughout the game. Um, I think PJ's got it. That's an area that he's got to continue to to work at. He's got to really demand it down there and hold guys off and keep moving and sealing. And uh, but we we did call some action for him late in the game. On a couple of occasions, I know we got it to him once late. There was kind of a breakdown after, and he got fouled. Uh, and then there was another action that we called for him that they did a really good job of. They they swarmed him, and then they trapped him late too. You know, they trapped him on a possession. I don't know, with a couple minutes to go, and uh, we probably didn't get it moved out of there as quickly as we needed to to attack. It. Go ahead, Hunter. On that three at the end of the game, did you, did you feel like you got a good look for what you wanted at, at the end there? Yeah, I mean, it was a great look. Uh, just got to knock an inch out of good, but missed it by maybe half an inch. So next time I'll be ready. Any more questions for Coach Hunter? Coach, um, obviously you can't do too much over this loss uh, with a game on Sunday, uh, but I, I imagine uh, whether whether it's West Virginia or Marquette, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good opportunity for y'all. Yeah, they're both, you know, really good teams. I think they're both undefeated off the great starts play extremely hard and, and change a bunch of defense, get after you. And so, yes, it's a, it's another great game, another opportunity for us. And, you know, we got to lick our wounds tonight and get back at it tomorrow and figure out how to try to win a game. All right. Fred, that was that it? Thanks, Coach. Okay.